Hi, this is Christine Reeve. I'm now with Autism Classroom News. And today I want to show you how to graph using a spreadsheet I've set up that will self-graph data for the percentage of correct responses across time. So it is designed to use with this data sheet, which I shared on the blog and you can download. Um, it is the data sheet itself is set up to be used for multiple students or for one student for multiple activities. And because of that, the data then needs to be summarized in some other form to really make use of it. And so graphing data is really important to enhance students' progress, and this allows you to input the data and have it graph itself. When you download the file from the website, you will download it, find it in your downloads folder, and when you open it, it's going to ask you whether or not you want to enable macros. You do want to enable macros in this situation because the macros are what allow it to self-graph. So the Excel spreadsheet then opens, and what we have is a workbook that has room for 15 objectives. Um, the objectives are each skill that you're trying to assess, as well as a master that is easy to copy and paste to create new objectives. Each purple tab is the spreadsheet, which is set up to graph across three activities, and each yellow sheet is the graph that it will transfer to. So if I want to graph, I'm going to use this data, and this is one student across three days, we're going to graph the follows two-step directions to the group data. And so what you see is for the first day data was collected, the, he needed prompts for five out of five opportunities. Um, in morning meeting, he needed prompts for four out of five and one was independent. And then in PE, two of the responses, two of the following two-step directions were independent, two were prompted, and one was incorrect. Um, so this is what we're going to graph, and this is from the week of 926. What you see on the slide are weekly dates. They are set up so that it's done on a weekly basis because you're taking a weekly sample. Um, any data that you don't, any dates that you don't need, you don't use. It's set up for the 2013-2014 year, and I try to keep it updated. So in this case, activity one might be morning meeting. Activity two would be music and movement. Which I'm going to call M and M. And activity three is going to be PE. Um, in 926, on the first day in morning meeting. There was one independent response out of five opportunities. And as I said in the blog post with this data sheet, five is just an easy number. You could have more, you could have less opportunities depending on your needs. Uh, but for ease of this, I'm going to use five opportunities. So there's one out of five on 926. So there's one independent response. There are five opportunities. And it calculates automatically the percentage. In the next, it's going to be zero independent out of five opportunities. So that's going to be zero out of five, which of course is going to be zero. And in PE, it was two independent out of five opportunities. Now this will not allow you to graph the type of props that you're using. It's just going to graph independent correct responses. But what you see is that it actually increases, excuse me, it actually totals it across the column and comes up with the final percentage. Now I'm going to add some additional data in here just so that you can see what happens and I can show you a couple situations. Let's say that the student is absent the week of 1017. 
Um, and the week of 1024, we had a holiday. We had fall break. Um, okay. Now, the reason that I did that is I wanted to show you what would happen when you graph it. So, if you click on the graph, what you see is that the data is graphing itself. So, if we go back to the spreadsheet, one of the things that we need to do is delete the data that we don't need. These number n over a are placeholders that keep those dates from being graphed as zero. But in order to have the graph show up correctly, we want to delete those placeholders. So if I highlight them and I right click, I can clear contents. And when I do that, you can now see that there's a break in the graph. So you want to make sure that when you are graphing across breaks, you can tell that there was a break. So deleting those becomes important so that those lines don't get connected. Um, you then want to make sure that you click on this and you can put in the child's name. And I would recommend putting in what the skill is. So, the other thing you can do is if you only have a couple of activities that you want to graph, let's say you only on this day, on this week, only took data on these this one activity. You need to make sure in order to get it totaled, you need to make sure that you are deleting the other two activities placeholders. So that becomes important because then it carries the total over. Um, this then allows you to see if you want to go back and analyze your data, your total of opportunities. So if you see if you're looking at one out of one versus 10 out of 10, um, and again, it will graph as you go along. So each week you can put the data in and it will plot the changes.